In the past few years, we've talked a lot about various types of habitable planets and possibility of finding these habitable planets somewhere out there in our own galaxy. But what about super habitable planets? Planets that are even more habitable than Earth? Well, that's a completely different question, and it's a question that this recent study decided to investigate. Hello, wonderful person. This is Anton, and today I wanted to talk about certain discoveries coming from the study that go as far as identifying 24 specific planets out there in the galaxy that could be super habitable, more habitable than planet Earth. So let's discuss this in more detail, but first, I guess a quick reminder that habitability, or the idea of habitable planets, is still a topic we're kind of learning about as we go. So the idea of habitable zone, for example, this green area where Earth is orbiting, is essentially based on the ability for liquid water to exist. But today we also know that liquid water can exist in other conditions, and at the same time, certain planets like Venus and Mars that are also in this area are not habitable. So in this sense, when we talk about habitability or superhabitability, like in this paper, we're really talking about planets somewhere out there that have properties that are even better suited for life than currently we can find here on planet Earth. So for example, a planet like the one you see on the screen that possesses just the right conditions for liquid water, but also possesses better conditions for life to have potentials to evolve for billions of years, and also a planet that orbits just the right type of a star that's not too active and not too cold. And in this case, this study identifies these features very specifically. So for example, when it comes to the type of a star that this planet should be orbiting, they believe that even the star like our own sun is maybe not perfect, simply because it doesn't really have enough life in it. Our sun only has about 5 billion years left in it, but even in the next 2 billion years it's going to actually reach conditions where the life on Earth will most likely not be possible anymore, at least the life as we know it. Only extreme life will survive. For this reason, they believe that the best chances we have right now is looking around K-type stars. Our sun is the G-type, it's slightly more massive and it's also a little bit hotter. And on the opposite side, we have the M-type or the red dwarf stars, which are normally a lot less massive. They also survive for trillions of years, so even longer than the K-type stars. But unfortunately, these are also usually the ones with the most activity. They are what's known as flare stars and can produce a lot of dangerous radiation. So right in between our Sun and the M-type are the K-type stars. These can usually survive for up to about 80 billion years, so anywhere from 5 to 8 times longer than the Sun, allowing any planet around them to have just enough time to develop life and to have this life evolve for billions and billions of years. And since it took nearly 4 billion years for complex life, including ourselves, to evolve on planet Earth, it means that we need at least 4 billion years hypothetically, of course, somewhere else to possibly have similar effects. And K-type stars right now have the highest chance of allowing for life to thrive here. But there are other factors as well. One of the bigger factors is the moon, which by the way, this hypothetical planet has as well. Now, having a massive moon for a planet is extremely important in stabilizing various types of wobbles, specifically the changes in the axial tilt that usually our moon stabilizes. Because of this, the planet Earth only wobbles very, very little across the generations. For Earth, this difference in axial tilt is roughly around 2.5 degrees only. But a more extreme example of this is planet Mars, where the axial tilt can be as far as 60 degrees, which affects the climatic changes on Mars quite dramatically. And so having a relatively large and massive moon and also relatively close to the planet is really important. Early on in the existence of Earth, for example, the Moon was much closer, so the actual effects were much more dramatic as well. And so in this case, a Moon that's size and mass of, for example, Titan, the Moon of Saturn, orbiting slightly closer than our own Moon, will allow this planet to be a lot more habitable for much longer periods of time because of the climate stabilization. The other advantage to having more habitability that was discovered in this paper was in regards to the size and mass of the planet. Here's actually how these two compare. This is a better Earth, because it's about 10% bigger in terms of size than the Earth on the left, it essentially creates more surface area for life to survive on. At the same time, because it's more massive, it will retain more atmosphere with time, while the higher gravity will also allow this planet to retain a lot more heat on the inside. 
because maintaining the geothermal heat as well as maintaining all kinds of activity on the inside is crucial for these planets to maintain life for a very long period of time. In terms of the temperature, they believe that about 5 degrees warmer on average than planet Earth would also allow this planet to have more diversity and better conditions. And specifically, the example they make here is the tropics on planet Earth. The tropics and the warmer climates on our planet have a much higher variety of different types of life, in comparison to, of course, some of the northern and southern regions, like, for example, the Arctic. In that sense, they believe that if a planet is on average about 5 degrees warmer, it will have more chance for life to evolve and to thrive in these warmer conditions. And this also includes the atmosphere. They believe that if the atmosphere contains about 25% to 30% oxygen, with the rest being nitrogen or some other inert gas, it will create slightly better conditions as well, as opposed to Earth right now where the oxygen is only around 20%. Lastly, it's also important to have plate tectonics for the planet to exchange all sorts of materials um, with the atmosphere. And lastly, a lot of different types of bodies of water and islands for life to evolve both in the water and on land. And so using these features and using the catalogs we have from various telescopes, including some of the planets that haven't really been confirmed yet, they've identified 24 candidates. With many of these planets still being candidates, meaning that we're not entirely sure if they're there or not. But if they are there, they would make a pretty good superhabitable planet. Now, two of these planets have already been confirmed, specifically a planet known as Kepler-1126b and another one known as Kepler-69c. Although, unfortunately, none of these planets have all of the features previously mentioned, meaning that maybe they're a little bit more habitable than planet Earth, but not necessarily super habitable to the point where they're the best planets we've discovered so far. And of all of the planets they looked at, of these 24 planets, only 9 of them were orbiting a K-type star, 16 planets were over a few billion years old, meaning that they were old enough to maintain necessary conditions, but only five of these planets had necessary temperature conditions, and that's of course very important. And also, unfortunately, every single one of them was really far away, over 100 light years away from planet Earth, with one planet specifically, and that's Kepler-69c again, being over 2,000 light years away. So, in that sense, even if it is super habitable, doesn't really help us very much. But there was one planet that was very exciting. The planet orbiting the right star, the planet that seems to possess the right mass and size, and the planet that also might have the right temperatures as well. The planet whose designation you see right here. Now it's known as KOI because it's a Kepler object of interest. It's not a confirmed planet, it's a candidate. But assuming that this planet is real and assuming that everything we know about it is correct, this could be the first ever super habitable planet we've ever discovered. Although one major side note that the scientists make about this planet is of course in regards to its atmosphere. If its atmosphere is very thick and if its atmosphere contains a lot of greenhouse gases, it might still be an extremely hot planet. But assuming that it has the right atmosphere, it could be an extremely interesting discovery. A discovery of a planet that's even more habitable than planet Earth. Although another important side note here is that just because this planet is super habitable doesn't mean it's going to have alien life on it. As a matter of fact, we don't even know what uh, causes planets to evolve life until we discover life somewhere else out there. But it's still an important discovery in regards to trying to find another planet similar to planet Earth somewhere out there, or better even, planet that's even better than Earth. Which in contrast makes these planets extremely different, pretty much on the opposite side of the spectrum, from the extreme planets we've been discovering everywhere else, such as this planet right here known as Kelet 9b that has some of the hottest temperatures in the galaxy with some of the most extreme conditions, the least friendly planet to life. But whether the planet known as Koi 5715 is an actual planet and whether this planet is super habitable will probably take us a few years to answer. We're going to need new telescopes, we're going to need more observations, and we're definitely going to need a lot more data from here in the solar system specifically from Venus and Mars, to try to find out what happens to other planets and if life can evolve in other conditions as well. Which also means that it's actually pretty exciting times for space sciences and for various other discoveries we'll be making in the next decade or so. But until we learn more about superhabitable planets or until we learn more about this specific planet, that is all I wanted to mention in this video. 
Check out some of the other videos. Also, maybe subscribe or share this video with someone who loves learning about space and sciences. Maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. And maybe support this channel either on Patreon or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description below. I'll see you tomorrow. Space out. And as always, bye-bye.